we give definitions because I want us to be on the same page as we're going through this journey to become mm -hmm. better versions of ourselves than we were before. Because mm -hmm. that's what church does. It brings you to teach you how to take tools to apply to your life to then move out in the world differently. Yes, sir. To move closer to that concept of a copy love, but that's for a whole nother time and an opportunity because I'm focused on fear and power. So power, according to a book that I'm reading by Gary Zukov, states that power is the absence of fear by way of love and compassion guided by wisdom. Say that again. Wow, yeah. Say that again. Yeah. The absence of fear by way of love, compassion, Guided by wisdom. <laughs> this will all come back to the text, but just journey and walk with me for a moment. Mm. Then when it comes to love, there are six pivotal manifestations of love that one must engage. Five of those can happen at any unique way, but it all leads to the sixth one. So the first thing is to care. Mm. Can you show care for yourself and someone else? Right. Will you challenge yourself to grow closer, the second one, closer to yourself, others? Because if you do that, you're literally growing closer to God. That's a whole another conversation. <laughs> then, will you then protect yourself and another? So the folks that are in the room, you are to protect one another. Oh my God. You are to have care for one another. Yes. When God called you to serve, you were to then get closer to God to serve anew. But that is, again, for a different time and a different experience. And then it says to see the inner beauty in somebody else. Mm. That means you get beyond what you see before your very eyes. That's why I told you to close your eyes and listen to the words and not focus on the hoodie. Ooh. But the fact is to see the inner beauty of the individual to see that God is still working in them. Because it says God has given us spirit of Recording in progress. power. This is the unique space that we get to come to and then create spaces of vulnerability for yourself and others. And as a result, you'll find trust. Trust in yourself, trust in God, trust in each other. Amen. Then it becomes compassion. So I want us to understand what this means when this man up here telling you this. <laughs> compassion is this feeling that arises when you are confronted by another's suffering. Yes, sir. And you are motivated to relieve it. My God. Hmm. Power is the absence of fear by love, compassion, and wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to make good judgment based on your lived and learned experience in life. So if we go back to the text, it says, but, we don't have to talk about the fear, part, but, God has given us a spirit of power mm -hmm of love, of sound judgment. Sound judgment is wisdom that you learned from your own journey. Mm. Not mama's journey, not daddy's journey, not your kid's journey, but your journey. Mm -hmm. To make newer decisions. So now it comes to this space of understanding that all of those pieces that I told you before, put yourself in time out, begin to breathe through, seek evidence of something. Realize you ain't got to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> the fear of perfection mm -hmm. will imprison you till you will not move. That's right. You'll be stuck, yes, yes, yes. planted like a tree, mm -hmm. because you're seeking to be perfect. Perfect in your jobs, perfect in your families, perfect in your relationships, perfect in church. But it said that power is the absence of fear by way of love, compassion, guided by wisdom. God didn't give you fear, but God gave you power. So we get to claim the power for ourselves so that we are able to move past the things in which we were called to do by God. So you get to say to yourself, ain't nobody got to hear you say it out loud. <laughs> I'm gifted, and I have the power. 
I'm gifted because God gave me power from birth. That means you get to reconnect to something that was already inside of you. It already is in already you. There. Yes, sir. I'm gifted. It's already in me. Mama can't give it to me. The pastor can't give it to you. The deacon can't give it to you. The sister can't give you to you. The choir director can't give it to you. No one can give you the thing that God already gave you. Already. So you can stop outsourcing because it's the insource. Yes, sir. That you begin to go inward to find what God gave you already. Yes, sir. Which was yes, sir. power, love, sound judgment, and self-discipline. Yes, Yes. You get to do this very differently. And oh, Rev, what's the benefit of me doing all of this work that you're trying to tell me to do past my fear? Because you don't know how long I've been carrying it. You don't know how long I've been dealing with it. That's, that's fine. But today starts a new day. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That we get to do this, acknowledge the fear, begin to address it, and then find the ownership of what was your birthright that was given to you. So the benefits of addressing your fear and moving forward in life is you have personal growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personal growth is likened to the fact that you look for evidence. Yes, sir. Because then it begins to undergird your faith to know that you cannot be broken. You cannot be stopped. Yes. Don't they say if God be for you, mm-hmm. then who can That's what I'm talking about. See, I knew y'all be able to pull this with me. Thank you. <laughs> then it says it enhances your resilience. Uh-huh. When you address, honor your fear, that means you take personal accountability to the emotion that then you brought into yourself to then seek God to push out of you. But that's a whole nother piece of thing. So it allows you to then build a greater resilience to move through stuff that it no longer affects you. Because remember, it's something that we put on ourselves because God didn't give us fear. You then get to address it when it comes up again at any new situation differently and better. The other thing, it expands your horizon. Beyond the thing of what you thought you could not do, would not do because you was the first and I was supposed to be perfect, but you get to move beyond that limited scope. Mm -hmm. It's like in New York, we have the horses at Central Park that have the blinders. Mm -hmm. They only see whatever they allow to see. When you acknowledge your fear and address your fear, the blinders come off and you see the broader sense of what God has for you. Because God gave you power. God gave you love. So then it also boosts your self-confidence. Which means fear is not your prison. It's your liberator. Because you move differently to see how you can show up in the world differently. Then it's the freedom from limitations. You take the limitations off yourself and each other. Because you understand what happens when you're freed from fear. The other thing, it improves your decision making and you have a stronger connection to self, God, and neighbor. And then you unleash the unlimited potential that each one of you have because you are gifted with power, love, and a sound mind. You can never be limited by anything else unless we allow ourselves to be limited by. Because when we all do this work together, we become a force to be reckoned with. Yes, sir. Because why we're moving in love. There's no greater power in this world than love. That's right. Because the text says that that's what God gave you. So I invite you on this journey to address, acknowledge that you got fear. Don't matter how old you are, how young you are, acknowledge it. Then begin to take the steps to address it. Then own the birthright that you have already been given. Yes, sir. Because again, I will repeat the text before I sit down. Because I want us to let it resonate for us. Mm -hmm. That we ain't got to look outside anymore. It's already inside of us. Second Timothy Chapter 1, verse 7, the Amplified Version reads yet again, For God did not give us the spirit of timidness, cowardice, or fear, but dismissing all the other stuff and allowing you to start a fresh start. 
God has given us a spirit of power, of love, of sound judgment, of personal discipline, with the ability that results in calm, well-balanced mind, and self-control. Amen. 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 Recording stopped. So sad to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon.
of the queens. So together we can proclaim our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified unto the Spirit. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For President Joseph, our Governor Kathy, our Senators and our Representative Yvette, Christine and Charles. For all who work for justice and freedom and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Lawrence, our diocesan bishop. For Geraldine, our assistant bishop. And for Daniel and William, our assistant bishops. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Today we pray for the family of Victoria Cloudon, for Manasseh Adams and Michael Moses, for Teresa Francois and Justin Castro, for Ravina Moore, for Eubelin Shepherd and Hyacinth Shepherd, for Edgerton Belgrade, for a stop to violence of all sorts, gun violence, violence between nations, violence in our hearts and in our homes. We pray for a successful solution to all of the health ills of our day, and we pray for peace throughout the world. Hear us, Lord, for, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Give thanks for border washers, Episcopal and church women. As well, we give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, for Shirley Ann Brown, for Andrea Knight, for Alan Adams, for Earl Quashi, for Alma Phillip, for Dorothy Wright, and we give thanks for the birth of Mackay Gabriel Brown. 
We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray today for the repose of the soul of Victoria Cloudon, and we give thanks for the life and the witness of Mildred Agatha Carrington, for Joseph Smith Cudjo, for Doreen Theodora Jordan, for Wilfred Christopher Hunt, for Raymond Murchison Dark High, and for Beatrice Springer. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. May we who have been touched by the word made flesh be his body for the world, his hands to bring blessing, his senses to glory in the promise of creation restored. And so we bring ourselves before the Lord to confess our sins. You share your love with every people. We draw limits of race and creed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You immerse yourself in love of life. We hold back in fear and shame. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You change the water into wine. We refuse to let our hearts be moved. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Christ has broken down the dividing wall that made us strangers to one another. He has made us one humanity, that God might be all in all. He is our life, our hope, and our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'm not going to say too much about you just yet, Reverend Green. Welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one that is here with us this morning. Welcome to those that are joining us online. Welcome to all those who have heard the call of the Savior and have chosen to take the time out of this day, this Sunday, to put heart, mind, soul, and spirit in an intentional worship of the ever-living, ever-loving, and everlasting God. It is indeed as always an honor and a privilege to be here and I thank you for overcoming whatever obstacles that might have beset you in your journey in your intention to be here whether it's here in person or online Reverend <clears throat> Pastor <laughs> Preacher um, well some, some of the folks here today might not be as well acquainted as some of the rest of us are um, just a quick word and then I'm going to hush because I'll say more after the service about you and your preaching. But thank you. Amen. Thank you. Um, in case you missed it, Reverend Green has been a part of our Just Worship experience. Um, not necessarily every time we gather, but most of the times that we gather at 11 o'clock for Just Worship, he is present. Um, he has been a wonderful supporter of that ministry. Yes. Uh, he is a wonderful man of God, person of God, uh, a follower of Jesus Christ. And 
and has an uncanny sense of humor. <laughs> an infectious laugh, and indeed, it is always good to be around you, sir. So thank you for being with us. Um, he will uh, be, yes. Providing some leadership at Just Worship today, if you haven't got enough, because I think it's part two of that sermon this afternoon. Amen, amen, welcome. Okay, God be great. Uh, I'm seeing some faces I haven't seen in a while, and it's good that you were able to come to be with us today. Know that even when you're not here, you always have a special place in our hearts, and we continue to pray with and for you as time continues to go on. We give thanks for our, um, every so often, Sometimes stop by and beat a drum drummer. <laughs> Mr. Kevon, welcome, sir. Always good to see you, sir. And I know I'm going to get in trouble for this. But um, there are certain folk around here that are, that are celebrating 50 years of independence. I see a few colors around. I'm not going to call them out just now because we're going to talk about them in a little while at the end of the, closer to the end of the service. But um, having been involved with some of the uh, celebrations thereof, I give thanks to God for the energy and the joy with which you celebrate. Not only your nation of heritage, that is of Grenada, Caracou, and Petite Martinique, mm -hmm. but also of the way that you carry yourselves in the world as those that understand and know what it means to walk with the Lord. Amen. So thank you uh, for being here. Thank you for those of you that are online. Uh, Mr. Lowe, I know, is, is ready in just a moment. Uh, and before I forget, though, because my brain is old and crotchety, um, I wanted to say thank you to the dance ministry. I know y'all up there. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be self-disciplined, as I, the preacher has told me I need to be. So, Mr. Lowe, are, are we prepared? All are invited to stand as you are able as we sing our welcome song. As you draw near to the altar, uh, there are offering baskets. Should, should you have offerings to deposit? There are hand sanitizing stations to sanitize your hands. But as you draw close to this place where heaven and earth meet, where past, present, and future are joined together in the powerful now, this altar, where bread and wine become what is our food that transforms us more and more into the image and likeness of God, helps us to tap in to that reality that we are created and loved by God beyond all measure. Come, all that are able and willing, come to meet our Savior here. Come to receive bread and to receive wine and go forward from this place, renewed, transformed, changed, and with courage to meet the days ahead with the confidence that God has it all under control. Come one and all to the feast that is prepared for you, the feast of the Lamb that, in, it, that happens each and every moment of our lives each and every moment, even until eternity. Come and participate and partake of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And walk in love as Christ loves us and as Christ gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
before I drew a breath He was making ways for me Now and every day In each and every way He is making ways for me When my heart is filled without Feels like faith is running out I've come too far to turn around I know God is working out God will work it out One thing I know One thing I found God will work it out Things are coming together Be still, be still.
working now. God is working now. One thing I know, one thing I found is that God is working now. God is The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, God of many names, whose spirit runs free through all the earth, whose image lies deep in every mortal soul. In your grace, your word is made known to every people, calling forth the best they have to offer. Your beloved is immersed in the waters of creation, healing the chaos that floods our world. Your son is the guest who offers new wine, changing hearts grown withered and cold. Therefore, we celebrate the rays of morning light that bathe the world in glory and kindle a new song. your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon the gifts that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ who on the night that he was betrayed gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of freedom calling them to his table he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, he offers himself in touch and taste beyond all words can hold. 
great is the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is born again. Therefore, we come in memory and hope, responding to your call and the promise that echoes from the dawn of all time. May mind and heart be held by your self-giving love as we stand before the cross, approach the empty tomb, and praise the one whose name is lifted high above all earthly power. Receive our broken offering through his all-powerful grace and bind us in communion with all who share your gifts through Jesus Christ, in whom all ages and all the worlds are drawn into the ceaseless love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. As we prepare to receive communion, do be reminded that a priest will be in the back of the church should you require or wish for a personal prayer after you receive communion.
May Christ, who draws the nations to himself, teach us to love our enemies. May Christ, who enters the water of baptism, lead us back to all of us. May Christ, who is the wine of the world, turn our enemies into joy. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.
Amen. Amen. So everybody can sit down except for those who come from Grenada, Caracou, and PT Martinique. <laughs> oh, Lord. So in case you didn't know, this is the 50th anniversary of the independence of Grenada, <laughs> Caracou, and Petit Martinique. So, oh, it looks like, Mr. Lowe, do we have a choir that's going to assemble here in the front to sing? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, battalion, it, it would seem so. <laughs> but I don't know, I heard that the warden was going to lead us, so I don't know. We, we're, going, we're going to pray in a moment, and, and we'll see what the Spirit... <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, you remind us even in secular and civic life of the response that your people have to being free. You remind us in the history that we are hearing about now, experiencing now, and the people that hail from, the people that live in, the people that hold dear the islands of Grenada, Caracou and Petit Martinique, that in their hearts and their minds they have always been free, and on this 50th anniversary, soon to be celebrated, they will rejoice in your grace and your goodness. Pour upon them a unique charism of your spirit, that as they go forward in this celebration, the world will know and understand that it is blessed through them, and they will know and understand that God has touched them, is with them, has given them all that they need to persevere and to continue to spread that message of love, joy, peace, and freedom to everyone that they meet. Let your hands be heavy upon them, be they here in this country, continue to be resident in those islands or scattered to the far corners of the world. Help them to feel now your grace and your goodness and send them forth from this gate with renewed strength and courage to meet the days ahead. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought it was. Um, don't talk, don't talk. <laughs> elect, uh, well, you have the mic, so. <laughs> now we will sing a portion of the national act. All will stand, please, as you are able. Come and give us some announcements. Notice it. A chorus, a hymn, a solo, whatever the Spirit allows. Amen. Good morning, church. Father Walmart, Brother Dealey, Father Anthony, and Reverend Jermaine. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> When you pray, God listens. When you pray, storms get stilled. When you pray, doors open. When you pray, relationships get restored. When you pray, sickness gets healed. When you pray, hope gets rekindled. When you pray, strength is renewed. When you pray, answers come. Don't lose faith about what you are praying for today. God is ever faithful. His answer will come at the right time. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We welcome you, those who are here today worshiping with us. And we thank those who are worshiping online for being here with us today. We hope that the message from Reverend Jermaine brought us some sense of where we are and where we are going and the help that we, some of us would need. A few reminders and some new announcements. Uh, if you forgot your pledge card today, we're still accepting them, so bring them the next time you come to church, and we thank you for that. Remember to stop in the Noel Hall to see if there's any 2024 offering booklet that's, be, that's belonging to someone that you know that you can carry it to them, and we thank you for that. Also remember to put your name and or your number on your offering envelope so that you can properly be credited for year-end statement. Please contact Ms. Mitchell in the office to make arrangements for your 2023 statement. Ms. Mitchell will add your name to the list and she will let you know when it is ready for pickup. Uh, you should also let her know how you want to receive it, whether by email, whether you'd pick it up, or whether you want it to go by US mail. Um, if you recall, last year we had tax preparation. So this year, tax preparation begins at 10, um, on February 10th. So it's from February 10th through April 13th, Saturdays only. And you can drop off and pick up here at the church between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You are required to bring an original photo ID, such as a driver's license or New York State valid ID. The Brotherhood of St. Andrew Brooklyn Assembly presents its annual President's Day Breakfast. That's Monday, February 19th at St. Gabriel's Episcopal Church on Hawthorne Street, beginning at 9.30 a.m. I believe that there are some flyers in the back or in the Noel Hall. Tickets are $30, and you can see any member of the Brotherhood for tickets and information. The Episcopal Diocese of Long Island announces the Barbara C. Harris Scholarship for Truth and Reparations. Eligible applicants must be black, African-American, or Caribbean-American who are direct descendants of African people who were enslaved in the United States and the Caribbean and are pursuing a college education or vocational trade training. Applicants must be a U.S. citizen or hold permanent resident status, residing in the Episcopal Diocese of Long Island, which encompasses Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk County. Filing period is January 25th through April 13th. Uh, Cultural Heritage Ministry presents Netflix documentary series, High on the Hog, How African American Cuisine Transformed America. That's at 5 p.m. this coming Saturday, February 10th, right here in the church. Also, you're reminded that Cultural Heritage is holding an open mic poetry uh, reading. It's entitled, My Love is Black, on Saturday, February 24th at 6 o'clock in the Noel Hall. Ms. Laverne Mason. Ms. Mason is going to give us some information about the luncheon. She's one of the co-chairs of the luncheon committee. Good morning. Good morning. Father Wilmack, Brother Dealey, Father Anthony, good morning, church. I'm here on behalf of the 2024 Luncheon Committee. We are so excited to announce the luncheon this year. It will be held at the famous Russo's on the Bay in Howard Beach, and the date is Saturday, May 11th. The time is 1 to 6 p.m. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Tickets are now on sale, and the cost of the tickets is a small donation of $165 for adults, $165 for adults, and $115 for children 12 years and younger. To purchase tickets, please contact Ms. Yvette Wood or Ms. Shani Cloudin. You can also visit the church office or pick up a flyer. They're available in the back of the, the church today. And anyone listed on that flyer, you can contact. Um, 
So please, please get your ticket as early as today. They are going. If you would like to pay in parts, we've actually created a payment plan. And so where you're gonna be able to pay in three parts. Beginning this month, February, March, and April, you can make your payment the last Sunday of the month. So that's February 25th, March 31st, and April 28th. And you'll make a much smaller payment of $55. After three payments, you would have reached $165. So please get your tickets. We want everyone to come out. This year, our, te our theme is Hats Off. And so that's a celebration, basically, of cherished memories. So first and foremost, all the women, please bring out your best and most spectacular hats. And we know, St. Augustine, we know that you know how to wear hats. So we expect to see some very beautiful hats. Um, the men can too, I suppose. Yes, you can as well. <laughs> As usual, we're going to offer a souvenir journal, so you'll be able to, in, in the journal, you can um, submit cherished memories. So remember, we're focusing on cherished memories. What are cherished memories? These are things like graduations, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, anything that is meaningful to you, any kind of accomplishment, you can place that in the journal. Information will also be in the back of the church about what the cost is for the size of the advertisement you'd like to put in there. So please think of anything and speak to the journal committee. We'll be led by Brianna Baptiste and Kelvin Brown, so any of those two members can help you with placing an ad. And also, because we take care of everything, there's round trip transportation. So you don't have to worry about getting there. There'll be round trip transportation. More information is gonna come on the cost and how that will work. And last but not least, we will also have a raffle with some very, very exciting prizes. We're really coming big this year, so be prepared for that, and more details will follow in the weeks to come. If you have any questions, reach out to anyone in the journal team, check out the flyer, um, reach out to one of the coaches. They are Be Ms. Beverly downs Kerr, Tamara McFarland, and myself, and we so look forward to seeing you all this year. Thank you, thank you so much. Have a blessed week. Thank you, Laverne. We will, be, we will be wearing our hats. Okay, so we just started um, Black History Month, and so I chose today specifically the following. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Someone wrote this. And I read this last night. This quote is attributed to John Wesley and encapsulates the essence of his philosophy. It serves as an inspiration for individuals seeking to make a positive impact in the world. Have a good day and a blessed week. Happy 50th Grenada, Karakou, and Pity Martinique. <laughs> Father Womack. Good morning again, all. I know we are, have, are about to use up our allotted time, but I did have a couple of things to mention. Um, first, you heard that we prayed for the repose of the soul of Victoria Cloudon. Victoria Cloudon is the mother-in-law of Susan Cloudon, uh, grandmother of Shawnee Cloudon, who went on to be with the Lord. Uh, the celebration of her life will be on Thursday, February the 8th, with a viewing from 10.30 to 11.30, uh, the Mass of Resurrection at 11.30 at St. Matthew Roman Catholic Church, 1123 Eastern Parkway. Again, celebration of the life of Victoria Cloudon will be on Thursday, February the 8th, the viewing from 10.30 to 11.30, the Mass at 11.30 at St. Matthew's Roman Catholic Church, 1123 Eastern Parkway. So we'll continue to be in prayer with and for the Cloudon family. Thank you for those who uh, were able to and continue to support the John, Davidson, and Edwards families 
as we gathered with them to celebrate the life of loved ones that have gone on on last week. Um, we uh, also prayed for the birth of a certain Mackay Gabriel Brown that would be the child son of Kelvin Brown. Woo. Kelvin and, yes, amen. Kelvin and Courtney welcomed him on the first day of the month. He came a little early. Today was to have been his due date, but he just couldn't wait. So we will pray with and for the Brown family and look forward to celebrating with them uh, as the time allows. Uh, we had a wonderful celebration in the Diocese of Absalom Jones at St. Philip's on yesterday. I was glad that I didn't have to preach today because my voice uh, is, is a little um, hoarse from singing so much there and then singing so much here this morning. <laughs> God be praised to our resident musicians. Um, I can't say thank you enough for what you continue to do for how the Spirit works through you and for what you bring each and every time we gather for worship. So thank you all so very much. Um, and, and I have a couple other things to say, but I'm, as, as the time is, is getting on, I, I need to share one thing quickly with you and I'll table the rest until next week. Uh, many have, uh, have expressed concerns, wonder about opening the front door. And as we've uh, mentioned, there's significant structural work that needs to be done above the front door, um, at least uh, to stabilize it and get some protection uh, if we are to use that door again. I am standing before you to give you a number, a number of the cost of those repairs. Now, if any of you uh, wish to just donate this fun sum of money, please come and see me. If not, um, you're all, of, all of us are going to need to prayerfully consider how we might donate toward the work that needs to be done. I'm going to ask you that you root yourself very firmly in your seat, that you take a deep breath, that you, don't, you monitor yourself for the fear that this number might engender in you. <laughs> Four, the number to complete and uh, make sure that we don't have to revisit that issue again in a few years is $122,000, $122,535, yes, a lot of money, but we have overcome odds similar to this in the life of this church. We have done it time and time again. What was that evidence? Preacher, looking back to see where God has brought us from. We'll talk more about how we might do this, but I just wanted to give everybody um, an idea of what it's going to cost. Um, borrowing a favorite phrase from our erstwhile treasurer, um, any of you with a, a largesse uh, out of which to help us, we would love to speak with you. But in any case, I just wanted to let you all know uh, that that's, that's what we're looking at to get that work done. And not just to get it done, but to make sure that it's stable for years to come. We'll talk more about it again uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, do have a wonderful day. Take good care of yourself. Stay safe and well. Uh, just Worship will begin in a few moments uh, with part two of our sermon. And um, I think that's everything for this week, right? Yeah. Okay. Also, the ushers will be handing you uh, sheets that have all of the events coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. Also, a prayer list and everything. So take care. God bless you all. Stay safe and well.